focus for quite a lot of people. And it's, I think it's very reasonable to say now through looking at King's lists, through looking at the history of Egypt, through looking at the history of the patriarchs in the Old Testament to, to harmonize that history. And you can, I think it's very possible, and I'll show you what I mean. So, uh, from what I recall, you, you, the main, the crux of the point here, the upshot was that the patriarchs of ancient Egypt were the prophets of the Old Testament? Ixos, yes. They were in, well, I don't want to say invading tribe, but a tribe that came back from Sumer, Babylon, and so right. on. The Canaanites, there's a Canaanite connection there. Right. But they went back into Egypt, right. and they were not liked by the Egyptian uh, the, uh, Coptic, Ramesses, Coptic, yeah. The, the, yeah, the Egyptian pharaohs that we're talking about roughly 1,300, oh, oh. 1,600. Oh, that, that's before the, quite, okay. uh, yeah, before the Coptics. Fairly, okay. it, but it, it gels really well with the biblical, with the Bible story. Well, it makes it's sense. It, it does make sense. Um, but what I'm, uh, what I'm uh, trying to understand is what's the significance of that for your belief system, if that is true? Finding, essentially, Finding the patriarchs, because lots of people don't believe that Moses or Jacob or Abraham really existed. They think it's just a story. Lots of atheists. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. I see. Yeah. They see it's all rubbish. It's all just you know people just making stories up. Okay, okay. I so it validates it validates the yeah. Abrahamic prophets. Ah, uh, sorry, the no, Old Testament prophets. Okay. There's a tempest stella, I think, that, that lists the templates. Right. And they're very interesting. And you can see that there was a thing, something happened in the Mediterranean. There was a sink, the sinking of a, an island called Santorini. It's still there, um, right. Santorini. Uh, it's called Thera. And this thing erupted and sent a lot of this slurry and rock into the Mediterranean. It right. was a tidal wave. And it was in science, and there's a documentary about this, and they found out that the, one of the easiest ways to describe the parting of the Red Sea was to say that this thing, where the waters receded into the Mediterranean and then came back in again. Right. I heard they found, um, you know, rocks from the eruption all the way in Egypt. Is that true? Yeah. Or is that yeah. just hearsay? Well, yeah, of course, but well, the, the idea of the, this the blood red. Uh, what's it, the Jordan is it turning red? Uh, the water's turning red. Right, right, right. This is that, that ash, that volcanic ash, and there was a vo volcanic eruption without a doubt at this time. It's, it's clear from the um, uh, archaeology, the um, The sediments which are yeah, left over, yeah. Coming. Right. So that what happens is this ash comes down onto into this water, all of the frogs, all the fish come out after they die because of this top, top, top of the ash, caustic yeah. ash, right? And the ri the rivers ran red with this ruddy red colour, right? That's captured in the Egyptian archaeological record. Right. Um, it's captured in the Bible, in the Old Testament. But I think that was wasn't that What's the description in the Bible? Wasn't that blood? Yeah, or was that something else? Red with blood. Like the, the, the notion here is that it happened in the, histor well, in the historical record. It's, it's largely, it's probably somewhat embellished. Um, they, they, they changed the story to make it more okay, interesting so, so to read. In, in, your, in your worldview, you're happy that the Bible has been adapted by writers over time yeah. from fragments. So you don't, you wouldn't say the Bible is like a... It's not fiction. It's, it's uh, of course it's not fiction, but it's not, it's not fact either from the perspective that it wasn't documented at the time. It was later on writers came and they tried to piece yeah, together what they, they could. They stuck together the history. I mean, we talked about the Ten Commandments, the Psalm, there are Psalms that are actually taken from Egyptian simple uh, inscriptions and stuff. Couldn't it be the other way around as well, that the Egyptians took it from well, we, the Israelites? We do. I think they're, they're basically recording the same history, and I'll tell you why. I think it's because this Hyksos, this reign of Hyksos arrows were being circumcised, they young, they had this, the notion of the side pelts. Right. All right, they, um, what modern uh, Jews have the, now. And the language they used was slightly kind of different, a little more Levantine, right. ancient, ancient Levantine. We have this, which is the, the names of these patriarchs and the biblical leaders. 
um, Ramses, 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 yeah, see here how they actually put it um, taken together. Siaman, Salmon, Salmon, Basso, oh, Sorkin, okay. Boaz, Obed, Opet, Amen, Opet, Jesse, Ariese. But da David, David, okay. David is Susenes, but there are Has there been any? David is T U T, David Dalt. Right. So, this is one way of showing that uh, those who claim the Israelites never went to Egypt, that that's nonsense because there's a lot of yeah, correlation. There's that's more to it than that. Right. And the story is effectively these, these two rival um, Egyptian, kind of Egyptian tribes were, were fighting for and they had a co regency for a while. There was a dual. Regency, right. while these Hyksos came into and, and essentially lived in Upper in, in Northern Egypt, right? Well, upper Egypt. Yeah, Upper Egypt, yeah, it's Upper and Lower. And lower Egypt is actually North because the, yeah, yeah. there's a mountain and the mountains flow into the Delta. So that I mean, it starts from Sudan, right? The Nile. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not yeah, yeah, starts, but right. yeah, that's the journey um, of it. Okay. But yeah, the, the, I mean, you can take any line of reasoning here and look at the history of the Egyptians and you'll find there's the idea of shepherd kings. This is a Hyksos time. They had a reverence for rams and, um, and sheep. Okay, so that's interesting. Shepherd kings. So this is referring to when the biblical prophets were shepherds. Yeah. So what's the Egyptian reference for that? The shepherds is the Hyksos. Hyksos. Shepherds meaning shepherd kings. Um, shepherds herders of sheep and the idea of the Apis, the bull worshippers from one of the big Ethiopians. When the Bible mentions the cow worship, cow so that's the same thing? This is right, yeah. They came along and, and actually replaced this Apis bull worshipping uh, multi-god Egyptian theology with Abraham, which is one of these guys because his name was Mam Abraham, they, they, they swap around some of the um, so we um, swap around the, the name here. Yeah, yeah. Man, Abraham. You've done a lot of research Jacob in this. Jacob <laughs> is Jacob. Jacob right. Bar was this, right, right. this guy. You know, and I've been into this for a while because it made so much sense. So Senes, this guy, um, Solomon's wife, was called Maka Matema. Right. And the, um, Seishon is his name. Is, is, is that a reference to Sheba? Yeah, and Sheba, yeah, yeah, okay. Sheba, yeah. It's from Yemen. I think it is. Yeah. And the is, is the same name these these two queens had from the from the Egyptian and then the the Jewish patriarchs, right? right. The Hiram Atif, the Grand Temple builder, Hiram Abif, Hiram Atif. It's the same name. You know? Right. There's a lot, there's so many correspondences. Well, it's hard for them to explain that, especially considering that these are independent evidences to the yes. Bible, right? Yeah, yeah. Sheba, I mean, there's a whole line of Makara Matema, this is what I'm saying. In the Queen of Sheba, they, they had the same names. This fellow here, Ralph Ellis, is explaining how, and he said, this was, was really good work. This fellow pulled out a lot of these, and he, um, he was coming from an amateurish perspective, but, uh, he, John, he, uh, he was really, he enabled a lot more people in academia to think about this and bring out uh, a lot of these stories because they're just one for one, they're actually quite clear. Um, so it's a wonderful thing for Christians in the world. Well actually, uh, like, for Muslims as well because yeah. the, if someone tries to undermine the existence of these prophets uh, in Egypt, and yes. the surrounding areas, yeah. you know, we also oh, face a historical really, problem there. I'll send you some of this information if you want, you can have a look. Yeah. King David Padjuat, uh, this is the old, the, the Egyptian name, but you'll see that they, they essentially, what they've done is they've taken a component, because these Egyptian kings had many names, they were given two or three names, you take some components of some of them, they actually compute very nice phonetically into David, you know. Yeah. Um, that, that you've got the correspondences as well in the Old Testament. Is there any you reference to... to Annie in this, yeah. Psalms 104. Sure. I've heard that, um, you know, <laughs> some claim there's no reference to the parting of the sea. Is there any... There is. 
Where's the reference? Well, as I say, the idea of the parting of the sea and the, 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 the waters were set at the beginning of that eruption, because it was a long way, like hundreds and hundreds of miles away, right? This whole shelf. Uh, with the eruption fell into the Mediterranean Sea and it created a tsunami. And what happened was these waters, I think, at first they receded and then they were pushed back. And this, there was an area, and there's a great documentary on this, just for, just just science, just people talking about this moment in history and, and, and seeing So would that, would would that mean that there would be a dry path for them yeah. to walk through? Yes. And, and uh, how, how long was the crossing? Um, it, it, it couldn't would, have been the it entire... Would have been, it would have been long enough for people to make their way across that, that um, part of land to get to where... Uh, I'm sorry, the ge my geography... Sure, so for, I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to uh, sort of visualise it in my head. Clearly when the Israelites with the Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, stood there, mm -hmm. and then ahead of them they must have seen land. So we're not talking about, you know, a, a, a huge... Um, area that they must have covered there must have been no, something if it's a tributary into the mediterranean though it's right. going to receive right um i tell i tell you what you should just look at to watch the documentary on the on what's it, it called um, i'll find out for you okay um i can find out That's quite there interesting. might be a couple of <laughs> because okay. it, it, it became and again there are a number of different pieces of evidence these these, these guys were just trying to find out whether that uh, Momia with the exodus in history was was actually maybe might have happened. And it sounds like, and this guy, Ralph Ellis, looks at that story in one of his books here. And he went three, four hundred pages a piece. He takes you back to the beginning and he's looking at them and going through the primary sources right. and fleshing out what actually happened to them. Um, and it's now people have been talking about it for a long time. And you know, obviously, um, Freud, Sigmund Freud wrote right. the book Moses and one of theism, I think. And he looks at that for not. Yeah, but I, I don't think he believed in Moses, though, right? Um, I, I think I think he was more from a metaphoric point yeah, of view. I think he was trying to figure out who this guy might have been, and I think he he found out that the Akhenaten Aaron story, the brothers Akhenaten Aaron, was such a good. Um, Analogy. Correlate for analogy for, uh, yeah, for, um, for Moses. Right. And Tuck Moses, you know, Moses, the name Moses is actually Egyptian, right? And they had a big, the idea is anyway, they fell out these two tribes. The Exodus story, there's a lot of, there's a lot Could of. Could the two tribes be referring to the uh, Egyptians and the children of Israel? Israel again. This is the same. Story. Or is it? Or is it two Egyptian it's groups? Hyksos. Yeah. Well, they, what I, I believe happened. This is my musings on it. But I believe that those these two old um, traditions, these old religious traditions, split off at some point. Right. One became the Sumerian Babylonians in later times. The others were the Egyptians, the old Egyptians. The first, their first two 12th, 13th, 14th dynasties. Right. And they uh, evolved separately, but they had the same cosmological okay. or, or order at the beginning. There's some sort of genesis that they share, yeah. right? So you know, and symbolism that they share. Yeah, I mean, what what I would say about uh, the old patriarchs, which you've you've done a lot of research on, is they were strong monotheists, right? They believed in one God. They believed in the worship of one God. And when it comes to what we were speaking about last week. The main sort of point that we were disagreeing upon is what does it mean to worship God? Because from your perspective, you believed that having Jesus as a intercessor was, was fine. And me and Hashem were trying to explain actually it's not, right? But if we look at these old patriarchs, which you've done a lot of research on, you can clearly see what their beliefs were. Their beliefs were the same as the beliefs of the Muslims today, yeah. that there's only one worthy of worship. I don't doubt this, and it's really interesting. Um, you're absolutely right. What Abraham and what Moses did, these two guys, was come along and say, worship the one. Yeah. Stop worshiping your God. Stop doing all this stuff with these idols. Get rid of that cow worship. It's no good. We're going to bring in this new age, and they did. Yeah, there was a, There's a worship, revolution and the uh, the ram worship. Yeah, and with Christianity, some say, well, it's the fish worship, the areas of Pisces. Um, 
but they said worship the Aton. Adonai. Adonai. Adon. Yes. Well, think of that oneness, central pillar of creation here. Yeah? Get rid of all of the other, all the confusing deities that you've become fat and lousy on. Yeah. You know, don't you? And, and think, and this is the beautiful thing, they harmonize this faith, this not knowledge, I want to say faith, and they crystallized it in this new theology, which was Israel, Old which is Old Testament yeah. theology. And from there, you get this, like, from that thing, you get Christianity essentially, they're just three different branches and different offshoots. Same yeah, I mean, one of the th one of the things that the Quran mentions is that God sent messengers to all nations, so all people, even people in Latin America, people in Africa, Asia. I interestingly, I went to Paraguay, which is in South America, and there I came across um, these group of people who were speaking Warani. They were people who were indigenous to the region, and they believed in one God. They used to pray in a way that's similar to the Jews, similar to uh, Islam in terms of bowing down. And the same thing is in North America. What we find is there's a book called The Gospel of the Red Man, which is Christians showing that in these regions there are people who are similar to Israelites in yeah. that they worship one God and they have similar traits. And when you go to Africa, when you go to Southeast Asia with the, for example, Aeta people in the Philippines, you find similar traits. So the thing is strong, pure monotheism has always been there. The difference that we have with our, um, sorry? In, 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 in ancient India, absolutely. The logos, the word, the idea of the word, forget Christianity a moment. That word is talked about in Mesoamerican religion. Right. They, they reference it in North American native religion. Yeah. It's there in, in the, the supreme deity in the Brahman, the breath, and the spirit resting on the breath. Yeah. And that's an interesting cosmology yeah. there. You know? I mean, that's, a, that's, that's more like a metaphor, yeah. but, the, but the, 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 the main thing which I think I was trying to get at is that when it comes to Christianity, where Christianity, we believe, has become corrupted is where it moves away from pure monotheism to where it starts to deify Jesus, right? And I think you said that they're both branches, but I wouldn't say they're branches. I would say that the early Christians were definitely upon the truth when it comes to following Jesus in terms of not believing Jesus is God. But then later on, we find these changes that take place and those changes happened due to empire. So for example, there was a time in which the Christians who were monotheistic and not Trinitarian, they were actually a good number, but they were defeated in battle. And you had the Holy Roman Empire, which went forth and spread Trinitarian Christianity. So what we Muslims would say is, is it makes more sense to follow the early Christians. I know you're a Gnostic, this right? This is the thing, this is that, that Christianity, the first two centuries of that Judeo, really it's, it was more, and we look at it now from a historical perspective, and we don't really call them Christians, we still call them Jewish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were just essentially Jewish still, they were just an offshoot, a messianic fourth sect, yeah. the, the fourth way, they were, they were called... They believed in Jesus as the Messiah. Faith yeah. As well. yeah, and the idea of the word, and there's a kind of slightly Hellenized take on this idea of the Logos, and it's interesting, the epistles really concretely, like again and again and again, they're talking about the spirit and the entering of the spirit into the, the human body, the heart. And they don't know of the Christ that only came around apparently 10 or 15 years before. The, the, the literal historical man, Christ, they have no idea of this guy. Um, you know, no, I wouldn't. It's, I would say. No, no, I mean, that's according to what you're saying but historically there obviously was a physical Jesus who was walking around talking to people interacting with people so Jesus was a real person obviously you believe that right 